Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Akshanika. I hope you are enjoying it so far and are learning something. Uh, remember, if you get any more questions, just uh, leave them down in the comment box and we'll get to them as quick as possible. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about tracking. And uh, for most of the shots inside a Drunk Gamer, I use the After Effects Tracker, which uh, people kind of overlook or don't understand fully. And uh, it's actually really powerful. So uh, I sort of explain the, the way it works and the settings you can apply to it and uh, the best way to pull a track from uh, certain shots. So uh, why don't we go check it out? Hey guys, uh, welcome back. We are inside After Effects again. And uh, for this one, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the techniques I use for uh, tracking sort of these easier shots. Uh, the tracker instead of After Effects is a lot more powerful than people think. Um, however, I will say that uh, for you know any time the camera moves sort of into the Z axis, uh, you need to sort of jump into another tracking program, such as like PFO is a pretty vi viable one for a low price. And then obviously if you work in a studio, uh, Buju will probably be the one you're using, which is a great tracker. Uh, but for these, uh, for everything inside of um, Drunk Gamer, uh, I actually use the uh, After Effects tracker. So let's jump into it. Um, first off, if you don't have your tracker window open, I have mine right here. Uh, go to your window and tracker. And that's what it'll be. Click that and this box will pop up over here. So select your footage and then hit track motion. Now you're not going to see anything inside the composition window because it doesn't pop up in the composition window. It's going to pop up in the layer window, which for me is right here. It'll probably be different for everybody because um, I have my setup a little bit different. So as you can see inside the tracker uh, on the layer window, the tracker pops up this little box right here. Uh, we want to do not only the position, but we also want to track the rotation because the camera rotates a little bit. So we'll check the rotation box. Um, if you go up to your options, the way the tracker works is it tracks on uh, three different channels. Uh, I have the luminance selected, which always works the best for me. So basically it'll track on... Um, the difference, the difference in contrast between the point you select, the target you want to track, and then the area around it. So you usually try to select points of high contrast, uh, you know, points that are a little bit lighter than the stuff around it uh, works the best. RGB would probably work pretty good. I very rarely use it, but if you want to put like um, colored tape or like a colored dot on something that's, you know, drastically different than the surrounding colors, like a, you know, a blue dot on red or, you know, something like that, it should track it pretty well. Uh, so I leave everything else the same and uh, just track the luminance channel. So we'll pop in here. As you can see, the uh, tracker has this little box. If you click on the outside of it, you can kind of target an area. We're going to move it down here. We're going to track this little uh, this little guy over here. It's a pretty dark spot uh, amongst light. So you take this inside box and you grab the uh, the corner and you can scale it around. You really want to like have this box pretty much just take up exactly what you're tracking. So I'll scale it to just pick up exactly this little rock right here. The outside box is pretty much the search area for whatever color is in the inside box. And so the larger the search area, the longer the tracker is going to take. Um, the smaller, the quicker it'll go. But you want to do a larger if your camera uh, jitters around a whole lot because it'll let it uh, you know, pick it up faster. So we'll just do a little bit of a bigger one just to be safe. Um, all right, after you get your uh, track point two down, you can come back to your track point one. Uh, it does, shouldn't really matter whichever uh, one you put first. I just ended up doing the track point two. Uh, okay, so it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, I'm going to do this little bolt right up here because it's sort of white and it's in a um, sea of other colors. And so we will target this, drop your inside track box to just target the white area that you want to track, and then push this up a little bit. And uh, these points should both work really well. And since we're at the beginning of the clip, we're going to hit advance forward, kind of watch the tracker. It seems to be holding really well on each point. And it looks like a pretty solid track all around. Uh, from here, you can go up to layer, new, null object. And uh, then you'll drop a new null object down here in your window. Go to your edit target. Make sure it's your most recent null. I usually like to name this like a tracker. So we'll come down here. Name it tracker. So that way you don't get confused if you have multiple nulls in your shot. So now it's targeted to your tracker. Hit OK. Hit uh, apply. X, Y. Hit OK. And you have a tracked shot. Come over here. You can see you have your little null object. It's stuck on that first tracker point holds to it pretty well so we've got a pretty good shot. 
So then when you want to uh, composite things in, basically all you have to do is bring out your uh, your media that you want to composite in. And on this one, I think I did a bullet hole. So we'll bring out this metal bullet hole, just drop it into your composition, and you know scale it down, maybe rotate it. So it whoops. Rotate it so it kind of looks right. And uh, scale it down some more. Then sort of just position it right where you want it, and uh, obviously you're going to want to composite it in a little bit more than what I have done, but uh, we'll cover that later. <clears throat> and then all you really need to do down here in your tracker and your uh, timeline is parent it to the little pick whip on your metal hole and parent it to the tracker, and it should pretty much absorb all of the information that your tracker has and leave it in the same spot. So it's holding pretty solid at that point, and uh, you know it looks pretty good. So anytime you guys need to do anything out there with a with a tracker, it's uh, you can do it inside of After Effects, and it's extremely powerful. And uh, you know it just doesn't need to be something like this. Uh, if you're doing like a gaming montage, uh, you can track points. You can track pretty much any point inside of um, you know the Battlefield Three game or Call of Duty game. You can track your points. Corners work great. Uh, points of high contrast work great. You can follow a gun barrel around. Uh, things like that. You can just do a lot of really cool things that opens it up to put, you know, like 3D text or any like explosion inside the game. And, uh, you know, works pretty solid. So, um, you know, it's a pretty powerful tracker. But thanks for listening, guys. If you had any more questions or, uh, you know, concerns or anything, just make sure you hit us up in the comment box. And uh, hopefully you are enjoying these and they're insightful to you. Uh, I think my next one will be about uh, compositing. And, uh, you know, Jeff's going to talk about some more sound design here uh, later too. And I hope you guys are enjoying Akshanaka and I will catch you next time.